Land videos. guys welcome back to Halfland performance videos uh, today we have the 300 wheel horsepower na j30 build um, he's obviously right there and what we're doing today is the intake manifold and throttle body removal and installation I'm gonna go step by step for you guys um, just for any anybody that's new to the motor um, not too sure how to work on it this is gonna be the video for you one of the very first mods that most people do is intake manifold throttle body ported and polished whatever that may be um, we at Hafferland performance we do all types of porting and polishing and that includes intake manifolds and throttle bodies any intake manifold, any throttle body, doesn't matter. Um, what this customer did, and what I usually suggest, he heated my uh, suggestions and he went to the junkyard. He picked up a 3.5 intake manifold. I believe this is from an Odyssey or a Pilot. Um, and it came with the uh, throttle body. So we went ahead and we did our Hafferland Venturi throttle body, port and polish to the throttle body. And we went ahead and we also did a stage two as you can see there, we did a stage two um, port and polish on the runner side and on the throttle body intake side. So if you guys are interested in uh if you guys are interested in any of that work, you can go to our main website, which is hondajseriesengine.com. Uh, once again, it's hondajseriesengine.com. Um, and just go to the shop tab, and that will move you over to our online store. And you can find all of our porting and polishing options. Um, we do offer different stages. So uh, stage one is just the throttle body inlet on the intake manifold. Uh, stage two would be throttle body and runner side ported. And then stage three would be um, uh, the full, only on magnesium intake manifolds where they can split open, um, would be a stage three fully poured and polished all the way throughout. So anyways, guys, let's get started. All right, first steps you guys, you guys want to take, um, go ahead and start unhooking anything that is attached to the intake manifold. So you have the actuator for the lower VTEC right here. This is for the valve actuator inside the intake manifold. Um, you have IAT, um, some other miscellaneous stuff, um, map sensor, you got the throttle body connection, um, all the hoses on the back. So go ahead, go thoroughly over everything, make sure everything's unhooked. And usually you do have another port right there. It is. You have another port into the intake. So make sure you just basically go over everything. Look for any sensors that connect to the intake manifold or to the throttle body or the intake unhook those and then we'll move on to the next step. All right, guys. So once you have everything unhooked, as you can see here, uh, you can go about it a different way. You can either just take the intake off or, um, leave it on, take the whole thing off as one um, he has his um, his vacuum line off the intake is a pain in the ass to get off so we just went ahead and we took the intake off but as you can see all the connections are undone blah 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 here and then uh, we still got one there so but what I wanted to show you guys is also the throttle body coolant bypass so what you can do here as you can see you have two lines you have one line here that runs into the throttle body and you have one line here and this is a uh, this is the coolant that runs into the throttle body so this is usually um, for colder climates um, this will sometimes the throttle plate will freeze or get stuck what this does it helps warm up the throttle body in cooler winter or, or yeah in cold temperatures so what you can do you take these two lines off and you basically just route them back into each other and essentially that is just uh that right there is the coolant bypass so or the throttle body coolant bypass all right guys so once you confirmed all the connections are off we still have the uh the lines for the throttle body coolant on because it, we just can't simply get away so what we're going to do um, we're going to take the manifold off flip it over and then we can get to those lines and also what you guys can do you can um 
unbolt the throttle body but make sure you have a new gasket because these are just a cardboard type gasket it's not an mls um, steel that you can reuse so you will need a new gasket that's why i didn't want to really pull this off um, but it's not a huge issue for us because we already have another throttle body connected to the intake manifold but regardless guys um, we're going to take this off flip it over and then get to it and what you can do here guys obviously un go ahead unbolt all of these and then you just lift the plate off lift the plate off be careful with the gasket and all your bolts you don't want to drop any bolts set this guy down and usually i wouldn't set the uh, gasket down like that guys but this yeah, like i said we, we already have everything needed and so now you can get to all the bolts so you're gonna have this bolt one two three four five six seven eight nine okay go ahead and undo all those and then the intake manifold should pull off of the uh the runners because the runners are underneath that, Ooh, that thing's all right hot. so uh got everything pulled out pulled all the bolts out and the intake manifold just pulls right off and as you can see guys got to the uh throttle body coolant uh line so i'm gonna go ahead and unhook those and i'm gonna go ahead and do the throttle body uh coolant bypass all right guys well it's been a while since i did this and uh did not notice but you can actually just go ahead and fucking bypass all this shit you don't even need the barb so as you can see here you have uh, coolant coming out of the passage, goes through here, up through this line, back into this line, and then um, back into here. So what we're gonna do, these are the two passages for the, the coolant. We're just gonna run this one back into there. Don't even need the barb. So it's just gonna sit right back down in there, guys. Oop, there was a bunch of coolant. But you see what I'm saying? So just run this line back into here and you don't even need a barb or a fitting or anything like that. Um, just run it back in and that's what we're gonna do. And then you can actually uh, take some more hoses, clean all this up a little bit. All right, guys, so you can get rid of this whole damn thing here. So being that he, um, he has a short ram intake, uh, he already bypassed all this, which was for the um, stock intake or induction tube, that whole assembly. And as you can see here, basically uh, the seventh gen, uh, not the seven and a half, the 03 to 05, they have this weird little green cap valve. Basically that line, this, this port right here goes into the intake manifold and you just unclip it from this. And now you can clean up your engine bay a little bit, get rid of all this. And as you can see here, guys, just went from here to here with the line and that's it now you bypass your throttle body coolant all right now we're going to start cleaning up um, all this we're going to take the intake manifold off and as you can see here he already has our half lane performance runners and look at this gasket matching guys check this shit out look at that that is what gasket matching should look like guys if you have another set of runners or you've seen other by other guys runners this is what gasket matching looks like that Okay. All right. So now we're gonna pull the uh, we're gonna pull the uh, uh, gasket off, and we're gonna go ahead and copper spray it. As I said in all my video, guys, I use copper spray on all my MLS, which is steel, multi-layer steel gaskets. Never knock on wood. Never had a single issue with any intake leaks, any gasket leaks whatsoever. All right, guys. Once you got all that done, you want to go ahead copper spray, like I said, and look at that. That is gasket matching, guys that is gasket matching all right so i went ahead copper sprayed all that now you want to move over to your new intake manifold and you want to make sure uh the mating surface is clean which it is look down in the ports make sure nothing's off there i'm sorry i'm just admiring my own party all right and go ahead and place the bad boy on guys just go ahead set it down gently make sure everything lines up and then you can start bolting everything back so once you have all the bolts just lightly snug down just to where they start bottoming out then you want to turn to your manual guys and the uh torque is going to be 16 foot pounds and this is the sequence right here you go one two three four five six seven eight you get it so just take that and it goes 16 foot pounds just follow the torque sequence and go ahead and torque them all down all right got everything uh torqued down to 16 foot pounds off of the torque specs and then just go ahead next up is going to be the top plate put the top plate on and the same thing uh for the top plate guys it's going to be 8.7 foot pounds and here is the torque sequence for you Go ahead, pause the video, take that in, but go ahead and start torquing this bad boy down. And then after that, guys, you are just going to basically start hooking everything back up. It's a reverse order. So just go ahead, start hooking everything back up, and that is it. All right, guys, here she is. 
uh, 3.5 magnesium Hafferland ported and polished stage 2 intake manifold with a Hafferland uh, Venturi ported and polished throttle body. Uh, the only thing that we had to do that was different on this one, because some will have it, but we took the actuator um, off of the old one and plugged it in just so it wouldn't throw a code. So you can see here on the stock throttle body, we went ahead, pulled that off hooked it up and just we're just gonna let it sit there it'll still actuate um but obviously you don't have any flaps so this is being it has no uh interior valves or flaps it's it's actually gonna promote higher uh, better top end um than what the other one does because those those valves basically what it does it, or those flaps those butterflies it it it's like a variable plenum size so they put those in for um a better low end torque and then high end so whenever it's low end they're closed and then uh, no, whenever it's high end, they're closed, and then uh, low end, they're they're open. So, anyways, uh, the only thing that we have left here is the IET because he didn't have. There's no IET um, bung on this where there is on the stock intake manifold. So what we're gonna do, we're just gonna tap into the coupler and run it into there for now. But anyways, guys, that's basically it. So all you need to do now, go ahead, start the car and get driving. I uh, hope the video was helpful, guys. If you liked it, please uh, thumbs up, like, subscribe, share, do all